Welcome to the Agility in Real Life podcast, Take 5 in Real Life. Now your hosts, Mike Studeman, Jeff Lee, and Pat Campbell. Hi, welcome back to the Take 5 IRL podcast. I'm Jeff Lee, one of your hosts and a partner at Agility IRL. And I'm Pat Campbell, one of the other partners at Agility IRL. And uh, good to see you again, Jeff. And uh, I thought today maybe we could talk about stakeholder mapping, which seems to pop up a lot when we're working with partic in particular product owners and product mm -hmm. managers about who and when. Yeah, I had a, a client this week and, you know, stakeholder mapping isn't something you should do just to give yourself something to do, right? It, it should have a mm -hmm. purpose. And mm -hmm. we had a team that was getting started. They were new, didn't feel like they had all the right people at the right meetings and people, you know, the stakeholders who were in some of the meetings weren't really sure what was expected of them. So we went through an exercise uh, and there are different tools for doing this. Uh, we did one that was really three concentric circles where in the middle we have the core team, right? Who is doing the work every yep. sprint? Um, you know, the, the people who need to be on the, you know, the daily scrums, that sort of thing. Beyond that, who's involved, right? Who's maybe helping to prioritize work, a, a stakeholder who's submitting work, a different stakeholder who is, you know, receiving the work done by this team. Uh, those people who need to be involved on a really frequent basis and they're helping set the direction at some level for this team. They went in that circle. And then beyond that, we had our informed group. Right. Who are the people who need to be aware of what this team is doing, but aren't aren't in the day to day or even the week to week? Um, so that that was the informed group. Mm -hmm. And what this exercise did, you know, it, it, it seems pretty simple at that point to get people into those groups. But once we let the informed people know that you have to come to the sprint review um, every two weeks if you want to be involved. Well, some of them are like, eh, maybe I'm on the informed group. I don't want to come to that meeting. Well, do you need to? Is Are we going to be missing anything? And so it really kind of helped people self-sort into those different groups. We were able to show them, you know, if you are in the informed group, you know, these are the scrum events you're coming to. These are the other reasons why the team might be reaching out to you. If yeah. you're in the core team, you know, you're doing these things. And so it, it helped people to understand what meetings they needed to be in and why they needed to be there. It's not the only technique for stakeholder mapping. I know, Pat, do you want to talk about another one today? Yeah, and and just to comment on what you just described, it's uh, it's so cool to see something, uh, a tool that simple, drive that kind of conversation uh, to the point where people are self-selecting where they think they should be. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's just an example of uh, uh, a very easy to use, but very powerful tool. And uh, there's a, there's a, so that's a three concentric uh, circle approach. There's actually a four quadrant approach as well that I've used that uh, is, is similar. And uh, basically on a um, X, Y axis, you, you graph on the X axis, uh, a low to high interest of the stakeholder. On the Y axis is a low to high influence of the stakeholder as opposed to interest. And so you get four quadrants then uh, mapped against that. Uh, lower left is monitoring, uh, and for those, uh, those are low interest, low influence. Uh, you just keep an eye on them, but do not bore them with excessive communication is this, the recommendation. Uh, upper right is high interest, high influence. You, you want to fully engage with them and, and uh, make significant efforts to deliver what they're looking for, their outcomes. And then you have the, the lower right, high interest, low influence. You keep them informed. High influence, low interest, you keep them satisfied. So it's a it's another approach with four quadrants versus three, but it, it accomplishes the same thing. And that's to drive the conversation and understanding. And, and uh, mm -hmm. then you get a better handle of who to have when and where, which is one of the biggest challenges sometimes for product people. Yeah, I, I find with that matrix, the ones that interest me the most are the uh, the high influence, um, but but less uh, involvement. Those are the people that can really derail something, right? Um, so you need to keep them informed as, as you're going and and look at those stakeholders of, you know, 
who goes up there? Well, it's the people that can, you know, shoot you at the 11th hour. And so yep. um, hopefully not literally shoot you, but it, you know, the, <laughs> bad things can happen. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're not thinking about those people every day, but you want to make sure you're thinking about them enough. Um, yeah. And the one I find really beneficial is that low influence, but high interest, that bottom yes. right quadrant. Because yes. those are the people who are going to be out in the organization and can spread the word. Yep. So keep them involved, keep them informed and let them know how much power they have to help spread the word in the organization. And hopefully you get those people involved. It prevents you from that 11th hour problem in the upper left quadrant. Yeah. And another benefit to those uh, lower right quadrants uh, to tag on to what you said is that uh, they can often be helpful and beneficial to the detail of your work as well. Um, they may have low influence, but high interest. They can can contribute some knowledge you, that you might be missing. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I agree there that it's an interesting group to keep uh, engaged with for sure. Yeah. So as far as stakeholder mapping, you don't have to do both. You don't have to do one versus the other. You might not even have to do either one of them, to be honest, mm -hmm. but, you know, think about what application you have, what you're trying to get out of this. Um, do you have disconnects? Are you planning for the future? Uh, these different stakeholder mapping tools can be really beneficial. Yeah, and and uh, by all means, don't ignore stakeholders altogether because uh, mm -hmm. they can really uh, benefit what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, ignore them at your peril. All That's right, thanks for joining us again for another episode of the Take 5 IRL podcast. Thank you, Jeff. And hi, Mike, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Take 5 IRL podcast. If you like it, please go ahead and share it with someone as well as like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Also leave us a comment or a suggestion for a future episode. Again, thanks for listening, and we look forward to you joining us next time on the Take 5 IRL podcast.